By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have something super special. We are going to look at the finals of the Reprint Masters 2. And man, this has been a long road. I believe 50 or so players started this tournament. And in this tournament, you can only play with cards from the sets Revised, Chronicles, and 4th Edition. So they're all reprint decks. And we have Brian today. He is playing blue and white, a control deck built around the card Time Elemental. And he is taking on Matt. And Matt is really playing this high school deck, right? Mono Black. It's called Black Suicide. It's got a lot of creatures, a lot of removal. It's fast. It's cheap. It just wants to do one thing, turn the creature sideways. So we really have a classic control aggro matchup in the finals today. Now, before I jump to the deck tech section of this video, I would just like to point out that as always, if you want to skip this, I know some uh, people want to go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the games. And here I am going to start with the deck tech section of this video. And I'm going to start with the deck of Brian, a wrinkle in time. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of finalist number one, Brian, a wrinkle in time. So this is really your white and blue control build, right? And the cool thing is, uh, Brian asked the people on our Discord server, uh, what kind of card would you like me to build a deck around? And I believe he gave like three or four options. One of the options was Time Elemental. Most people voted for Time Elemental, and so he built a deck around the card Time Elemental. Now let's maybe then first also look at this card. So Time Elemental is one blue and two, a summon elemental, an O2 creature that uh, you can pay two blue and tap. And then it says return target permanent to owner's hand. You cannot use these ability on permanents with enchantment cards played on them. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Uh, if Time Elemental blocks or attacks, destroy it at the end of combat. In this case, Time Elemental deals five damage to its controller. Now what's really interesting, so it can just send back any permanent making it really good but it cannot send back a permanent with an enchantment at attached to it this is quite interesting because matt is playing with unholy strength so if he can unholy strength his creatures then they cannot be targeted by the time elemental maybe that's a nice thing to keep in the back of your mind if we look at the rest of the deck it is super controlling right and that really fits with the time elemental because that's of course also a control card so we see Four Swords to Plowshares, we see three counter spells. we see Stasis, which is really good together with the Sarah Angel, because we also have a playset of Sarah Angels, and because the deck is so slow, a card like Wrath of God can work really well, because Wrath, of course, two white and two to cast for a sorcery that buries all creatures, and bury means you cannot regenerate your creatures, right? And remember, this card doesn't target, so it also destroys the Black Knights on the side of, uh, of Matt, so it's a really good card against those Black Knights. And um, because because the deck's kind of slow, right? I think Wrath of God is a really good card in this. Of course, we also see the Jam Day Tomes because once Brian has control over the games with the Time Elemental, uh, he wants to use his Jam Day Tome to kind of like you also see in the deck to get that card advantage going, finally finding the Sarah Angels and winning the game on the Sarah Angels, right? Because that's the end goal, you know, killing through combat damage. So there are the four Sarah Angels. He's also playing with one Mistress Factory. That, of course, can also be a finisher. Now, some people have asked me, why don't I see a lot of Mistress Factories in this tournament? That is because they are restricted. We decided to restrict them, or actually I decided to restrict them for this tournament, just to see what kind of would happen, what creatures would kind of float up to the surface, what would people do instead of playing the four Mistress Factories now that they only have access to one. It's quite interesting, and I also think it's um, it fits uh, this type of tournament because it's reprints only. But of course, you know, we all have different ideas of the game, but that's why you don't see Mishra's Factory a lot in this tournament, simply because it is restricted. So a lot of people are playing a one-off like Brian in his deck. So um, this deck is strong. It made it to the final for a reason. It's just a really good control build. And Time Elemental, once it's on the board, because I've played against his deck and lost against his deck, once that Time Elemental is on the board, it is super 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 annoying you know i mean yes it's slow but don't underestimate the time elemental okay this is the deck of brian now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent matt and here we see the deck of matt so suicide black i just i still love this deck photo no sleeves no sideboard no fear tar torn up fear next to it 
concrete play mat, vintage rubber deck holder. I love it, man. So no sideboard. And this deck is just really good. It's really basic. You know, it's really your high school deck. Mono black, you know, drop those creatures, turn them sideways. But what makes this deck so good is that it's got one plan, but the plan works really well. And it works in combination with lots of creature removal. We see four terrors. And those terrors are going to be really good against the creatures in the deck of Brian because he can target all creatures in the deck. He's also playing with uh, three weakness. He's playing with uh, with Paralyze. Paralyze is going to be great against the Time Elemental. So it's, unexpe well, not unexpected because we know Mono Black is good, but I didn't expect it to make it all the way to the finals. So it's really cool to see this deck making it to the finals. Again, I think maybe Black Knight is going to be, again, really good because uh, Brian is playing with Swords to Plowshares. He cannot target them with the Swords. Of course, he can still send them back with Time Elemental, and he's got Wrath of God, so he does have some answers. And of course, Sarah Angel is a blocker, but oh no, Sarah Angel cannot block, of course, because she's white. Sorry, scrap that comment. So, I mean, it could be quite good. If he can get an Unholy Strength on the Black Knight, I mean, that's a problem. That is really a problem for Brian. I actually think, when I'm looking at this matchup, I think Matt has a really good chance. I think this is really a bad matchup for for Brian because Matt's deck is simply going so fast. He's got a few cards that are really good against him. He's also playing with Drain Lives. Those can be a great finisher. I mean, I I I think it's kind of 50-50, but uh, you know, when I when I showed you the semifinals last week where we also saw Matt's deck in action, I thought Matt's chances were less against that deck than the deck that he's playing today in the finals, if you can still follow me. I do think that Wrath of God is going to be a bit of a problem for Matt because Matt has the type of deck where you have to commit. You've got one plan, right? And you've got to follow those, the steps of those plans. you got to just play out all your creatures and shan them with unholy strength and just attack, 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 attack. You cannot think maybe he's got a Wrath of God or maybe he's going to play a Wrath of God turn four or five. I got to kind of hold back a little bit. If you do that, the deck is probably not going to work anymore. So Wrath of God is definitely a problem, you know, something that Matt has to keep in the, in the back of his head, also because he doesn't have any card draw in his deck. But besides that, I just see a lot of possibilities for Matt here actually winning this tournament. Uh, let me know in the comments below who you think the favorite of this matchup is. I'm, I'm going to keep it to 50-50 here. I'm not, I, I see strengths and weaknesses in both of these brews, for this specific match, so I'm not quite sure. Like I said, I can see the Black Knight being quite strong in this match, the creature removal being quite strong for Matt, but I also see the danger in the sense that, uh, you know, Brian's deck has Counterspell, Brian's deck has the Time Elemental that can be super annoying, and Brian has the Wrath of Gods that I think could be decisive in this match, and also, of course, you know, it, the longer the game takes, Brian has card draw in his deck, Matt hasn't, so for both players, I see reasons why I think they could win it or why they could lose it. So for me, it's really 50-50. Let me know in the comments below who your favorite is. And uh, let's just go to the finals and see who's going to win the Reprint Masters. Is it going to be this deck, Suicide Black by Matt? Or is it going to be a Wrinkle in Time by Brian? Let's go. Game number one of the Reaper and Masters final is about to begin here. And look at that, Matt taking a double mulligan. He's also on the play, by the way. So he's starting with only five cards and he's on the play. So he's playing Suicide Black. And on the left, we have Brian, who's on blue, white, a time elemental control deck. And he's starting with a Mishra's Factory and a go. So that is really good for Brian. Just this opening, you know, finding a blocker. And just a double mulligan by Matt, that alone can already be decisive. But let's wait and see. And Matt not finding a land, passing turn. Oh, what a bad start for Matt here. Game one of the finals of the Reprint Masters. I mean, what Brian can do is just play a land attack for two, but maybe he can do more. There's an island. Tapping two here, and there's a Felwer Stone. Okay, ramping up. That's what he wants to do. Let's see if Matt can find a land. Six in hand, pass turn. Oh, this is so bad for Matt. I mean, his weapon is early pressure. We're not seeing that at all by him right now. And of course, Brian wants the game to take long. He is the control player. So this is great news for Brian playing a Plains here, animating the factory, attacking for two. Matt dropping to 18 and a pass. 
The only good news here, I guess, for Brian, uh, for Matt, is that Brian hasn't found a second blue. Because, of course, Brian is playing with some counter magic. Seven cards in hand now for Matt. No lands past the turn. All he's done so far in this match is take a double mulligan and play one swamp. There we see the other blue by Brian. Doesn't have a double white to play as Sarah Angel attacks for two again. Matt dropping to 16. Could play out a time elemental now. He has the mana. Are we going to see a time elemental here in the finals? There is the time elemental. Remember, he can use the time elemental to send back any permanent, including a land. So he can just start sending back the land of Matt. I mean, that is a huge problem. Matt needs to, if he can tear this or at least put a paralyze or something on it, he needs to do something against this time elemental. There is at least another black. Does he have a terror for the time elemental? Yes, there's the terror. Okay, this is good news for Matt at least. He's still behind, of course, but at least he can uh, kill the time elemental because can you imagine Brian starting to send back the basic lands to the hand of Matt? That would be pretty disastrous for him. It would mean he could never get more, more lands than two. Be an absolute disaster for him. So Brian now animating again, of course, and attacking. I mean, the factory is doing work. Six damage so far, putting Matt on 14. Brian playing that second white. That means perhaps next turn he can start playing Sarah Angels. He's playing a full playset of those. Tapping two. Okay, there we see a Black Knight. So Matt is finally starting to do something. And this means that Brian no longer can attack with the factory. So that's going to stop the bleeding a little bit. Let's see if Brian can find a Sarah Angel here. That would be great for him with the Sarah. That's a 4-4 powerhouse. Let's wait and see what he's going to do here. He's having a tough time here deciding, though, playing an island. Maybe he just wants to keep counter magic up and pass the turn. He is, of course, a control player. Tapping three. Does he have maybe a Brain Geyser in hand? Interesting. I really wonder what he's going to do here. Tapping four. Perhaps a Control Magic on the Black Knight. A Jam Day Tome. Okay, fair enough. Interesting that he is not keeping a, a double blue open. Perhaps he's got a Spell Blast. He's also playing with two Spell Blasts, I believe, and uh, three Control Magics. Look at that. There is an Unholy Strength on the Black Knight. So it's now a 4-3 First Striker. And he can swing in with this. And this is, this is great, actually, for Matt. That means Brian now has to take the damage, right? I mean, it's going to be really tough. Unless he's got a Disenchant. But then again, he doesn't have enough mana to end Disenchant and animate the Factory. Taking the damage here, dropping to 16. It does mean he's opening himself up to two points of damage from Brian. But again, you know, Matt is the aggressive player. His deck wants to attack. So it makes sense that he makes this decision. Let's see what Brian can do. I mean, he's still in a very good position. A Wrath of God would be quite good right now for Brian, by the way. That would take care of the Black Knight. I guess he doesn't have one because he's animating the factory, attacking for two, putting Matt on 12. Five cards open, tapping the one blue, tapping three. Are we going to see another time elemental? There's another time elemental. Now, the cool thing is time elemental cannot target Black Knight because it's enchanted. It can target, I believe, the unholy strength, but not the Black Knight itself because it's enchanted. So that's pretty funny. And I really wonder if Matt has, again, an answer to that time elemental. And Matt's actually doing quite well. There's a terror. Matt's doing quite well because he only has two lands and he's still in it. And he took a double mulligan. Attacking again for four. Oh, double. Is he going to play? Yep, there's a boomerang. There's a one boomerang in the deck. This boomerang is really, really good. 
because it also takes care of that unholy strength and it saves him four points of damage and Matt cannot recast it because he doesn't have the land. So this is a great play by Brian. I believe he's only playing one boomerang main, but it's working. And of course he can now attack again for two put Matt on 10. If he wants to, maybe he wants to keep mana open to counter and draw a card. That would be kind of the control thing to do. Brian playing a Plains first. I mean, he's got enough lands, which is really good when you have a Jam Day Tome and you play with Counter Magic. It's just great to have a lot of lands because that means you can do both things. You can and keep Counter Magic up and you can draw a card. In this case, he can and attack and keep Counter Magic up and draw a card. This is ideal for Brian. Anyways, putting Matt on 10, I would just, exactly, I would just pass. You have everything you need, you know. There's the Black Knight again. In response, he's going to draw. I wonder if he's going to counter the Black Knight. He is not. Perhaps he doesn't have counter magic. Or maybe he thinks, you know, I've got enough solutions to that one Black Knight. I'm fine. So Brian drawing a card for turn now. And Matt still isn't finding a lot of lands, by the way. He's still stuck on those two swamps. I mean, with two swamps, he can play a pretty much everything in his deck, I think, almost. Cannot play out Hypnotic Spectre. Cannot play out Ashes to Ashes. But I think most of the rest of the cards he can. There we see Brian tapping a white and a blue. Playing another Felwer Stone. Tapping three here. Ooh, tapping five, Sarah Angel. Yeah, it was waiting for that Sarah to hit the board sooner or later. Passing the turn. Again, interesting that he's not keeping a blue mana open. I would have definitely kept a blue open. Even if you don't have counter magic, you can pretend you do. Look at this, another terror. So, I mean, Matt cannot complain about the terrors. He's finding three terrors. So far, he's killed two time elementals and a Sarah Angel. They've all been terrorized. But I think if you're Brian, I mean, okay, you're a bit unlucky with Matt finding the terrors. On the other hand, he's now already played out three of them. It's going to end sooner or later. He's playing with a playset, so only one more left in his deck. Brian tapping. Say, oh, are we going to see a Brain Geyser? Looks a lot like a Brain Geyser here. Brain Geyser for five, That would be if, if that would be the case. This will be fantastic for Brian. He's just going to refill his hand. Yep, there's the Brain Geyser. That means he's going to go to eight cards. So he has to play out something else or discard. So really interesting to see now what Brian's going to do. Okay, he didn't drop a land yet, so there's the land for turn. He's on seven, which is fine, and past turn, I guess. I mean, things are looking bad for Matt, but they've been looking bad for Matt the entire match and still he's in it. So there's an Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, you know, I'm expecting a Swords here, but, or perhaps a counter spell. The fact that he doesn't counter probably shows that he's got a Swords in hand. Exactly, there's a Swords on end step. Removed from the game, he's going to gain two life, going to go up to 12. And draw for turn. I mean, Brian has more life, more cards. <laughs> I mean, Matt needs a miracle if he still wants to win this. But of course, Brian's deck is slow. So it could take Brian a while before he wins this game. Still has three Sarah Angels in the deck, of course. Only lost one to that Terror earlier in the game. So he's going to use the book, going to draw some more cards. I mean, if he's got a Wrath, he could consider playing one. Removing the Black Knight and then attack for two. Is he going to play out another Time Elemental? That could be quite good as well, because he can use a Time Elemental to send back 
Okay, another flower stone is also possible. I am, of course, hoping for some aggressive moves by Brian. But his deck is really controlling, so maybe we're just going to have to wait and see. There's the attack. Interesting. Does that mean that he's got a Howl from Beyond in hand? Kind of signaling that here to, uh, to Brian. And maybe Brian then has a counter spell. So this is a risky move by Matt, but I think it's a correct move because if you're so far behind, you just got to play towards your outs. And this is his out, right? Just try to attack, deal damage. You know, Brian being on 16, maybe he can get him to 14, whatever. And it looks like he's just taking the damage here. So it's working. He's going to go to 14, second main, tapping two. There's another Black Knight. And I'm liking this. This is really good for Matt because next turn he can do the same thing. He still has this maybe threat in hand. You know, he can just attack and, and do his thing. And now we see Brian untapping everything here, drawing for turn. Both players having really cool playmats, by the way. You see the drop of honey playmat by Brian. I believe, pretty sweet. And then we see Matt Strott with a playmat of all sorts of art pieces that he designed and combined himself. It's really cool. I know that he's a big fan of the Yakmov Demon. So Brian here tapping a white and the Felwer Stone. There's a balance, okay. That works. I mean, this is going to cost him a lot of lands, though. A lot of lands. I mean, in response, he can tap them to draw a card. I'm not sure if he realizes that, because that could be quite a nice move. I guess he's going to drop the island, right? Because you want to keep the duels. Yeah, that kind of, that, that makes sense. Also because you're playing against Black, so you don't have to worry about Blood Moon. I mean, Brian still has enough mana. I get the play. He wants to get rid of the, uh, of the Black Knights. And now he can attack as well. I think I probably would have just put some mana in my mana pool to, uh, to draw a card still with the, uh, with the Gem Daytone, right? Although then perhaps he had to discard that card because they had the same amount of cards in hand. That could be the case. Maybe that's why. That's probably why. Anyway, Brian passing the turn now. Matt playing an Urk Raiders, the 2 3 creature that has to attack every turn with an unholy strength. I love it. So this is now a 4 4. And here we see Brian in response drawing a card with his GM Day Tome now untapping for turn. So it's now a 4-4. The nice thing about Urk Raiders is, by the way, you have to attack every turn, but you can decide not to, and then you take two damage. I do like the fact that you have that uh, decision-making clause. For example, with Juggernaut, you simply have to attack or else the Juggernaut gets destroyed. With Urk Raiders, it's two damage. So at least you've got a choice. Let's see what Brian can do here. It's quite interesting because even if he finds like a Sarah Angel, it's a 4-4. So do you want to trade a Sarah for an Urk Raider? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, if you're Brian, you, you just want to get a Swords. If you can just Swords the Urk Raider, it's all good. You can Swords it, then attack for two. That would mean Matt would go up 4 to 14, would then take two, go back up to the, down to 12. Tapping four here for the book. Going to draw a card. I mean, that book is just so good. The Brain Geyser and the book has given Brian so much card advantage. You can also remember Matt started with just a double mulligan, five cards in hand being on the play. So there's been huge card advantage for Brian this game. And still, it's not even looking that bad for Matt. I mean, Matt being on 10, Brian being on 14, passing the turn here. Okay, so that Urk Raider is going to attack. That is exciting. There is a swamp. Four swamps now. 
And there's the attack, 4-4 four, four Urk Raider. Are we going to see a Swords to Plowshares? The second one of the game. Or not, a Disenchant. Oh, I like this. A Disenchant on Holy Strength. Then he animates the factory, right? And he can block on the 3-3 three, three factory. It's the risk you take when you're the uh, mono black aggro player. And I understand the risk. Are we now going to see maybe a Howl from Beyond? That could be a possibility. Also remember the uh, factory stays a creature till the end of turn. So we could also play a Drain Life for one. Oh, there's the Howl from Beyond. So there is the trade. Not ideal though for Matt. I mean, I understand the play, but Matt is playing with only one Howl from Beyond. It's really a card you kind of want to keep as a finisher. And he's playing another Black Knight here. So Black Knight number three hitting the table. And now Brian has lost his only way to deal damage, which is the factory. Of course, he has still those uh, three Sarah Angels in his deck. I wonder if we're going to see a Sarah now. Tapping the two Felwards and a Plains, a Tundra. He's tapping four mana in total, five in total. Are we going to see there's a Sarah Angel? That makes sense. So Sarah Angel hitting the board. Remember, Matt already used three Terrors. The only good news here for Matt is the fact that Sarah Angel is white, so he can just attack with the uh, Black Knight. Put Brian on 12. That is kind of the silver lining here for, uh, for Matt. If he can find another Unholy Strength, that would be hilarious. Tapping one, black. Okay, weakness on the Sarah. Okay, that, that does something. It makes it into a 2-3 flyer. That's actually not too bad. I mean, if you're racing, is he going to play another one? Another weakness. It's an 0-1 Sarah Angel. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, remember, if, if Brian can find a time elemental, he can simply send the Sarah Angel. Oh, no, he cannot target the Sarah because it's got enchantments on it. Oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, Matt attacking right now, putting Brian on 12. I think Matt's doing a really good job here. I still think Brian's the favorite, though, but just because of all the card draw on the book and stuff, but Matt's... Doing really, really well. Putting Brian here on 12. Brian can, of course, draw a card at end step. He's got enough mana to do so with the book. Maybe Matt's going to do something second main, of course. He's got still has two swamp open, two cards in hand. Brian having four cards in hand. So we're just going to wait and see uh, players being uh, in a conversation here. Tapping two. Okay, disenchant on one of them. Weakness. Again, a card you don't see often, right? One black enchant creature, minus two, minus one. I, I think it's pretty good. Call me crazy, but maybe in a deck with enchantress, you know, paralyze, weakness. Why not? Anyway, there's the attack. So two points of damage for Matt because it's now a 2-3. So he's going to drop down to 8. A little glitch on the side of Matt, by the way. Okay, he's back. Brian is waiting here for a second for Matt to reappear. But Matt's back, so... Uh... Is Brian going to do something else? That's the question. He can simply just pass, you know. I mean, he's got enough mana for the book. He can draw an extra card. He's on a higher life total. It's looking pretty good for, for Brian. He's tapping a blue and two. Are we going to see a time elemental? Hey, there's a time elemental again. It's so cool to see that card. So time elemental, two blue and tap. And return target uh, permanence. 
to its owner's hand. And if the permanent is enchanted, you cannot target it. Ooh, there we see Matt again, lagging a little bit here. Okay, he's back. His internet connection is not great, unfortunately. Tapping three black. Ooh, ashes to ashes. That is so cool. So ashes to ashes removes two play two creatures, non-artifact creatures from the game. But are we gonna see a counter spell here by Brian? I mean, Brian is playing with counter magic. He's gonna draw a card first. He's playing with three counter spells and two spell blasts. Are we gonna see some kind of count? No, we're not. He's gonna lose both creatures. They're removed from the game. What an answer by Matt. And he's gonna attack here for two, of course. Put Brian on 10. Wow. This Ashes to Ashes was really, 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 really good. And the removal in Matt's deck is doing so much work and I'm sure it has really helped him throughout the tournament. A lot of the decks in the Reprint Masters are creature heavy. So playing with four Terrors main, playing with Ashes to Ashes, Weakness, Paralyze, I'm sure that pays off. And that in combination with ch uh, cheap creatures that just want to keep attacking. I mean, Matt's on three. But Brian can of course also run out of creatures at a certain point. Going through his graveyard, there we see a Sarah Angel, two Time Elementals, and of course one Sarah Angel that's removed from the game. I do believe Brian is playing with a Recall in his deck. So he could use Recall, considering the Brain Geyser. He could of course get M Brain Geyser and Sarah Angel back. I would definitely get the Sarah Angel back, to be honest, because you just don't want to run out of creatures. That is definitely a way for Brian to lose this. Gonna tap five. Are we gonna see a recall? There is a recall. So he's gonna recall for two, I assume. Putting away a planes. And what else? And another a scrubland. Getting back the Sarah Angel and the Brain Geyser. Yeah, this makes perfect sense. This is what I would have picked as well. And this recall is super important for Brian here. This could give him the victory, actually. Remember, Matt's only on three after that to Ashes to Ashes, because Ashes to Ashes does five damage to yourself, a card originally from the dark. Really cool art by Drew Tucker. Anyway, there's the attack by the Black Knight, putting Brian on eight. And this is a really intense first game, actually. So I guess if you're Brian, I, I, would just, I would just play the Sarah Angel. You know, if Matt doesn't have an answer, he only has two cards in hand. He's already played out three terrors. He's played out, you know, the Ashes to Ashes. He's played out double weakness already. So what if Matt has terror number four in hand? That would be hilarious. Anyway, here we see the Sarah Angel. Oh my, oh my, oh my, what are we gonna see here? So untapped by Matt. I'm kind of secret, secretly rooting for Matt because this is unsleeved deck looks so cool. But I, it's looking super good for Brian. Oh, there's a drain life. Interesting, he's gonna drain for two? What is he gonna do here? And then is he draining the life total of Brian or is he draining uh, the Sarah? This is so interesting. I mean, if he's draining Brian, he might as well drain for three, right? But maybe he's got an unholy strength in hand. So a line of play that Matt can do here is drain Brian for two. He would go up to five, play an unholy strength on the knight, attack Brian, put him on two, and the next turn Brian would die. He's letting it happen. 
He's gonna go on six. There's the unholy strength. Oh, are we gonna see counter magic? Oh, there's the counter spell on the unholy. But it was a good game plan by Matt. Matt putting him on four. If next turn he can find another unholy strength and Brian cannot counter it, he can actually win this. That would be hilarious. And of course, uh, Brian, you're having four mana open, drawing that extra card. Whoa, this, this game is so close. And finally, we saw some counter magic on the side of Brian. For a moment there, I thought, do you even have counter spells in your deck still? Because this was just the first counter spell of the game. And he's playing two spell blasts and three counter spells. So that's five counter cards in total. So he can attack Matt here, put him on one. Exactly, there's the attack. Matt being tapped out, so there's nothing to fear here from Brian. And you can see Brian smiling. He's really enjoying this battle. That's always nice to see. Uh, players are super friendly here. Even though it's a final, it's very relaxed. He, he's got that brain geyser still. I mean, but you want to keep your blue open to counter, right? What if Matt has another unholy strength? You're dead. Or, or another drain life. You're dead. So he's asking now, what have you played out so far? We see one, two... Two Unholy Strength. No, three. Howl from Beyond and a Drain Life. But remember, he's playing with four Drain Lives. He's only played out one Drain Life so far. If he can find another Swamp and a Drain Life, he can also win it. Unless Brian, of course, has a Counter Spell. So there are quite some outs for Matt. I think if I would be Brian, I would just keep enough mana open to counter and just play a huge Brain Geyser and hope that I draw into counter magic. If I already have counter magic, I would actually consider maybe not even playing the Brain Geyser. Playing a Brain Geyser just for two. And I think this is a good decision. You want to keep enough mana open to, if needed, counter stuff. Because yes, you got the game in the back, but you don't have the game in the back. You know, you gotta be very cautious. Tapping four, what is he gonna do? Oh, five, playing another Sarah. Understandable, because if Matt has a way to kill the first Sarah, then he's also dead. So I think this is a good decision as well, playing the second Sarah Angel, having enough mana open to counter, having two Sarah Angels on the board. There's a vampire bat to jump block. That is funny. There's the attack for two. What are we going to do here? There's a divine offering on the book. That is a good move. Because that means he's going to gain four more lives. He's going to go up to eight, take damage. Now he's on six. There's a paralyze. Yeah, the last card is not going to do enough, though. So the Paralyze on there, but I mean, Brian has more than enough mana and Matt's out of cards. So let's just uh, watch Brian finish this. So he's going to untap. He's going to untap the Angel. Paralyze, of course, being a horrible card to put on the Sarah Angel and attack here. And that's the end of the road for Matt, at least the end of the road in game one, because this was just game one. How much fun. Let's uh, let these players sideboard. Well, at least let, let's let Brian sideboard because Matt doesn't even have a sideboard because he's fearless. He's suicide black. But let these players sideboard, shuffle up, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here is about to begin. And what an exciting game one that was. Matt being on the play again after losing it uh, that first game. Look at his opener there. Classic. Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. And at least now he didn't take a double mulligan. But this is great news here. Are we going to see a Swords to Plowshares from Brian? Is that a no? Well, he can, of course, still play it in the turn of Matt. Anyway, he's passing the turn. We're just going to have to wait and see. If there's no Swords, though, that would be fantastic for Matt. There's the attack. And there's the Swords to Plowshares. He's going to go up to 22, and does he have another play? That's the question. Are we going to see a Black Knight, Urk Raiders? No, we're not. Just a pass. That's not great, actually, for Matt. I really expected him to deploy another threat on the board. There we're going to see a Felwer Stone, probably. Exactly. 
So when you're playing with reprints, Felverstone is a great replacement tool for, uh, for Moxon. You also have access to Mana Vault, of course, but Mana Vault is a bit more tricky since it can uh, end up damaging you a lot. And here we see Matt passing turn, not playing out anything. This is not good here for Matt, really giving Brian the time and space he needs to start controlling the game. No time elemental though from Brian, just a pass. Matt going to six and also passing it seems. Pointing out that he had his dream opening and uh, that just had to work out for him. Yeah, Ritual into Hippie is great, but it's also very risky because when you're playing against a red deck, you got Bolt. When you play against a white deck, you got Swords. And most decks in old school play with either Swords or Bolt or both. When you play against, you know, other colors, it's not that bad. For example, when you play against my mono black deck, it, it's really difficult for me to deal with the, with the hippie turn one. Anyway, here we see a black knight. Are we going to see a counter spell? There's a counter spell. And, and that makes sense because black knight is difficult for Brian, of course, to deal with because of the protection from white. So this is a good decision by Brian. It looks like Brian's really controlling the game thus far, and that's, that's what he wants to do. He has enough mana to, to perhaps play out a Sarah Angel, but maybe he wants to wait with that and wants to wait until he has enough mana to also maybe protect the Sarah Angel with counter magic. Gonna tap six. Are we gonna see a Brain Geyser? Oh, Brain Geyser again. Such a good card here. Brian going back up to seven. This is so bad for Matt. He doesn't even have any pressure on the board. You know, Brian's still being on 20. There's the Hypnotic Spectre. Matt needs a little bit of luck here. I mean, he needs Brian not to find an answer to this hippie. That would be kind of sweet for him, but it, I'm, I'm really expecting Brian here to play a Swords or maybe a Sarah or just some answer to the Hypnotic. He could even play a Wrath of God. He does have some options, it seems, because he's really looking at his hand thinking, talking a little bit, tapping the, the, the play mat, tapping, untapping. Tapping the Felwer in the island. Another Felwer stone. Could it be that Brian just doesn't have an answer here to the Hypnotic Spectre? That would be unexpected, but that would be kind of the luck that Matt needs to get back into this. I mean, so far, this match has gone really good for Brian. And also this second game with that counter spell on the Black Knight, the Swords on the Hippie turn one, the, the, the Brain Geyser. He's really found the cards that he needs. But can he find an answer now to the Hypnotic Spectre. I, I think he can't. Exactly, he's passing the turn. Is he now? Counting his mana again. Yep, he's passing the turn. This is really good news for Matt. Or are we going to see a Swords, of course. Swords, remember, it's an instant. He can still play it. If it was Matt, I would first just attack, see if the Hippie survives. Exactly. There's the attack. And no, we don't see a Swords. He's shuffling up. Take the damage first, that's a good move. What happens a lot in my videos, and of course I don't do it intentionally, but when I get hit by Hypnotic Spectre, I'm so focused on the fact that I have to discard a card, I sometimes forget to take the damage. So one of the things that I do now is just like Brian, I first put the damage and then I do the whole thing, you know? Anyway, um, Brian here losing a Disenchant. Let's see what Matt can do. Can he put some more pressure on the board? He still has five cards in hand. I guess he only has answers. Maybe a lot of terrors, ashes to ashes, that kind of stuff. Passing to turn you back to Brian. I mean, Brian still has tons of cards in hand. It's still looking good for him. And he's on 18, which is huge. Playing an island here. Tapping, untapping. 
Tapping two Felwars for another Felwar. Okay, so he is finding those Felwar stones. But again, they're good in his deck. He needs a lot of mana, right? Like Jam Day Tome, Spell Blasts, Time Elemental if he's going to play it out now. There's a Time Elemental, exactly. So Time Elemental is four to use, right? Double blue and two, so you want to have a lot of mana. So the Felwar Stones really make sense in this deck. I am expecting Matt here to, to have an answer. He's just going to untap. Attack for two here. Boomerang on the Hypnotic Spectre. That's actually kind of good. The Boomerang has proven to be very, very useful for Brian. Tapping four, Drain Life on the Time Elemental. I think that's a really good decision. And Matt is really understanding the importance here of just killing those Time Elementals. They're just so annoying. And you have one turn to deal with them because after that, they don't have Summoning Sickness anymore. And they can just start sending back all the permanents. It's super annoying. So I think this is a really good decision by Matt. Tapping two here. There's a stasis. Interesting. Haven't seen the stasis yet. So stasis means that you don't get to untap anything. But of course, you do have to pay a blue every turn. So Brian having access to two blue. Seven in hand now in a pass. So there he pays the upkeep cost for the stasis. The art for stasis was made by the uh, aunt of uh, Richard Garfield, by the way. Another island here being played by Brian. Now a swamp here by Matt, seven in hand. And again a tap. It's really sweet, of course, when you have Stasis and Time Elemental on the board and, of course, tons of mana. Um, but unfortunately for Brian, the Time Elemental got drained earlier. One of the annoying things of Time Elemental, by the way, is it can also uh, send back uh, itself to the hand. So if you want to kill it, it's like, oh, no, I'm going to use Time Elemental and I'm going to send it back to my hand. You're like, oh, man. Matt here has to discard. Ooh. That is good news for Brian. What an interesting game two this is again, right? And Brian paying the taxes for the stasis. Only has one blue left that says Tundra. So maybe he's going to run out of blue mana. There is a planes being played by Brian and a pass, it seems. And of course, Stasis and Sarah Angel is, works really good together because Sarah doesn't have to tap when it attacks. So I am a little bit surprised about this, uh, this Stasis by Brian, but I'm sure he has his reasons. It is forcing Matt to now discard two cards already, so in that way, it's kind of working. Matt has lost a Paralyze and a Weakness thus far. Brian finding another island, so he can kind of extend the stasis train. And Matt just keeps discarding, but I'm sure his hand is full of threats, though. So as soon as the stasis is going to disappear, it's going to be a problem for Brian. Now he's going to pay another blue. Can he find another island from the top? And that is why stasis and time vault is so good, because with time vault, you can simply skip a turn... So that means your opponent has another turn with stasis on the board. And then you can, after your stasis dies, you can use your time vault, tap it to get an extra turn. So you get to untap after that. But of course, we have no time vaults in this reprint format. Another discard there by Matt, putting uh, throwing away the weakness. A little bit unlucky for Matt here that he's not finding any more lands. It would be quite nice. Just build a, play a land each turn. Oh, there's a disenchant on the stasis. Clever, Brian. Clever magic by Brian here, untapping everything. Of course, there's a reason he made it all the way to the finals. I mean, yes, you're disenchanting your own stuff, but in this case, it's really good. There is a time elemental finding its way to the battlefield again. And a pass turn. So now Matt gets to untap as well. I wonder if Matt can find... 
a terror here or something else. He is tapping for five. Drain life. So he's, I guess he's going to drain the time elemental again, right? That makes sense. I would definitely target the time elemental personally. Brian, of course, having a lot of blue open, he could counter. Counters to drain life. That is bad news for Matt. And another pass here. So now Brian finally has his time elemental on the board. No summoning sickness. So this is great news. Look at that. He's just passing the turn. He's like, I'm all cool. I got my time elemental. Another swamp here by Matt. It would be nice for Matt here if you could just like play out Urk Raiders and a Black Knight and put out like a double threat there. We see him not Specter. I'm expecting Brian to just send it back here. They're tapping two, playing a Black Knight. So this is what you want to do when you're facing a Time Elemental, right? Just play a lot of threats that are cheap to cast. And, you know, and leave it up to Brian. You know, say, you know what, Brian? You know, you can send one back. Go for it. Probably going to send back the Hypnotic Spectre, of course. Exactly. And then next turn, let's see what he's going to do. Brian kind of shaking his head, not really finding anything useful, it seems. Passing the turn, that's good news for Matt, of course. He can now first attack with the knight, see if uh, if Brian wants to send it back. Looks like he's going to tap two black again. No, he's not. I think I would, yeah, I would first just attack, see what he does. Brian looking at his hand here. Remember, he cannot play his swords to plowshares on it. Going to take the damage. He's still pretty high up. He's on 16 now, so nothing to fear really for him. He's going to recast him, not expect her. And he's going to cast Ur Graders. This is what you want to do against a time elemental. Flood the board. And maybe if, if Brian simply doesn't find anything useful, maybe he's got more disenchants in hand. Who knows? Anyway, there's a... Oh, he's going to send a time elemental back to his own hand. That can only mean one thing. Wrath of God. That would be disastrous. You can see Brian laughing. I think Matt's reading the writing on the wall. Are we going to see Wrath of God here? No, we're going to see a balance. Equally bad. Doesn't matter. And that balance, of course, wiping out all the creatures on the side of Matt. Also means that Brian is going to lose some lands again. We've seen that before. Also happened in game one when it uh, wiped out two Black Knights. This is really bad for Matt and really good for Brian. Brian can also recast, of course, his Time Elemental. Trying to decide, what am I going to throw out? What am I going to keep? Five cards in hand, I guess, for both players then. And there's a Mistress Factory. Pretty good, of course. And there's a Time Elemental again. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And things are looking up for Brian again. And there you could see that trick, by the way, of Time Elemental sending itself back to hand. There's a Terror, though, on the Time Elemental. That is good by Matt. So Matt is finding uh, some good cards now. And that keeps him in the game. There is a Black Knight again. Brian being on 16, Matt being on 24 at the moment. There's another creature, Urk Raider, so he's simply rebuilding. Having three cards in hand now in the pass. Now, do remember, Brian, of course, having the Factory. Factory can pump itself up to a 3-3, so that Factory is actually a bit of a problem for Matt. And he cannot put a Terror on the Factory because it's an artifact creature. So it's hard here for Matt to deal with. 
If he then has an unholy strength, for example, that would be quite good for him. Look at that, just a pass turn by Brian. There's a swamp. Okay, there's the unholy strength. Now we have that 4-3 Black Knight again. Are we going to see a counter spell by Brian? No, we're not. Also an unholy strength on the Urk Raider. So it's a 4-4 attacking now. Are we going to see a disenchant by Brian? I am expecting a disenchant here. If he doesn't have to disenchant, it would be really good news for Matt. But if he does, he can disenchant, block one of the creatures. That would probably be the Black Knight. But look at that, putting his cards away. It looks like he doesn't have a disenchant. Or does he? This is going to be an important moment. What is he going to do here? Reaching out to the Felwer Stones. Tapping a Felwer, okay, animating the factory. Pumping itself, blocking one of the creatures. I guess the Urk Raider, because then it still deals damage to the Urk Raider, right? Because Black Knight is first strike. And Brian ending on 12. Wow. So choosing to chump block with the factory. I didn't expect that. I probably... I, <clears throat> Maybe I'm wrong with that, but maybe I would have just taken the damage. I do understand that Matt, of course, plays with all those drain lives. But if you find a disenchant, you can have that ideal block, right? Where he disenchant the unholy strength and then block on the factory and pumps itself. And of course, your your um, Mishra's factory is one of your only weapons against the uh, the Black Knight. Remember, Brian also plays with two Wrath of Gods in the deck, right? So again, a Wrath would be ideal for him. Tapping five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? And actually, a Sarah, it's good, but not that good because Urk Raiders 4-4, four, four, Black Knight protection from white. There we see the Sarah Angel. Okay. There's the pass. Matt having one card in hand, going to two cards in hand. He can attack here with two 4-4s. Four it's looking really good for Matt. Putting up the pressure on Brian. Brian uh, blocking here the Urk Raider. That makes sense. Making the trade. But he is going to drop to 8 though. Matt putting more pressure on the board. That Hypnotic Spectre is perfect now that the Sarah Angel is gone. Brian needs, like he needs that Raft top deck right now. He's on 8. If he does nothing, he's going to drop to two and lose a card next turn. That would make it into a 1-1 one -one here in the finals of the Reprint Masters. Two cards in hand, Brian passing the turn. Remember, Black Knight is pro-white. You cannot kill it with, a, with the swords. There's the attack. Brian going to go to two. and He's going to lose a card as well. I guess he just has Lance in hand. Well, we're going to see what one of the cards is because he's going to lose one. He's going to tap everything, though. Oh, Alabaster Potion. That is so cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Alabaster Potion. That's going to net him a lot of life. Maybe it's going to give him enough life to buy him time to stabilize. Look at that. Gaining 10 Life going back up to 12. Alabaster Potion in the finals of the Reprint Masters. How cool is that? What a boss move here by Brian. And another Urk Raider. So, I mean, he's still not out of the woods, but he bought himself actually one more turn. But still, I love seeing this, this card. You can also prevent damage with it, by the way. There we see the attack. Oh, are we going to see a Swords here? No, we're going to see a Disenchant. Okay, that kind of helps. That saves him two points of damage. Going to take six. Going to go to six. Still on a, on a two-turn clock. Well, now a one-turn clock. So he's going to take his turn. He needs to find Wrath of God. Nope, it's a land. That means Matt wins game number two. This is so exciting. One one. Wow, we're going to go to game three to see who is going to win the Reprint Master. Game number three here is about to begin with, of course, Brian on the play, and that is a big advantage for him. 
Look at that. Looks like Matt took another double mulligan here. Five cards in hand just. There is a Vampire Bats turn one. So it's an 0-1 flyer, and for one black, he can give it a plus one, plus 0. So that's some pressure by Matt. Brian starting with an island. And the fact that Brian gets to start really, really, I kind of makes him a favorite in my book. Matt here attacking, dealing two points of damage with the Vampire Bats, putting Brian on 18. That's what Matt wants to do, some early pressure. There's a Plains and a Pass. No Time Elemental from, uh, from Brian. There's another Swamp, tapping two, pumping the Bats, dealing two more points of damage. Bats doing some work. It's a really nice creature, by the way. I also like to combine it with... Uh, with Bad Moon. There are no Bad Moons in the deck, in the deck of Matt, by the way. That's kind of interesting. He's choosing more creatures over, over the Bad Moon, I guess. There's a Wrath of God for one Vampire Bat. You can see Brian also smiling. He's like, I gotta do what I gotta do, man. <laughs> I mean, that Bat has some bad karma if like, if, like, God himself personally comes down to Earth to kill you. Oh, man. There's Hypnotic Spectre. Wow. If you're Brian, you're like, I'm not happy with this. I just used a Wrath of God to kill the Vampire Bats, and now this. Maybe he's got his second Wrath in hand. He's playing two Wraths. He's also playing Swords to Plowshares, of course, so he's got enough answers. And, it, and, and he can play a Sarah Angel. That's another option. But it is risky, because Matt, of course, has a lot of answers to creatures. So if he plays a, a Sarah, there's the other Wrath. Yep. You got to do what you got to do, man. I, I get it. I get it. I mean, at the end of the day, you're trading one for one. It's not that bad. But for Matt, of course, it's really nice to know that now those Wrath of Gods are out of the deck because Wrath can be so devastating. Matt only having two cards in hand now. Playing that Urk Raider. Are we going to see a Sarah Mahamoti Jin? We haven't seen a Moti yet. Papa Moti, 5-6. That is big. I wonder now if Matt has an answer to this. He's playing Paralysis. Terror, of course, would be the best answer. Doesn't have enough mana for Drain Life. Unless he's got some Dark Rituals. There's a weakness. Okay, I mean, gives it minus 2, minus 1. Turns it into a 3-5 flyer. I mean, that sounds less impressive. Look at that. Matt taking two damage because he doesn't want to attack with the Urk Raider. Makes sense. There is a Black Knight. Again, Black Knight not going to work against the Mahamoti. So Matt is really struggling here with the, uh, with the Mahamoti. I mean, the weakness is just not a great answer to the Mahamoti. I mean, it's now a 3-5 flyer. It can still block, block and kill both creatures. And when you're Matt, you just want to attack. Ooh, interesting. He is going to attack with the Modi. Does it mean that he's got another big flyer in hand, perhaps? Dealing three points of damage to Matt here, dropping to 15. I'm expecting him now to play perhaps a Sarah second main. Or maybe he's got swords in hand. Another Modi. Oh, my Modi time. Tapping a land too many, I believe. Exactly, untapping the Tundra. But wow, all those Mahamotis coming into the game here in game number three. Oh, Ashes to Ashes. That is horrible for Matt. That is, I mean, horrible for Brian. Great for Matt, of course. Wow. Ashes to Ashes taking care of two Mahamoti Jins. That's a first for me and a first here on the channel. That is brutal, and also he can swing in for four, putting Brian on, uh, on 12. Man, that's a brutal Ashes to Ashes. I mean, those Mahamotis are great against Matt, but now they're gone. And remember, you know, Matt is only playing with one Ashes to Ashes, so this is very unfortunate for Brian. I mean, yes, you can argue, uh, keep Ashes to Ashes in mind, uh, keep a counter open, whatever. But if it's only one card in a deck, I mean, the chances of him having that Ashes to Ashes 
and he only had two cards in hand as well. So I think it's quite normal that you don't expect that to happen. There we see a, uh, a stasis again. So that stasis is going to stop the bleeding a little bit here for Brian. So Matt cannot untap because of the stasis. Two cards in hand. It's going to drop to eight because of the Urk Raiders, of course. Wow, Urk Raiders stasis. Ooh, that's bad news for Matt. He's on eight, right? If Brian can just keep paying the tax for stasis, Matt's going to die to his own Urk Raiders. And then Brian's going to win the Reprint Masters. That would be pretty insane. That would be pretty silly. And cool at the same time. But it's definitely possible. Look at that dropping to six. Oh, that's so bad. And Brian can pay for at least one more turn. So Matt will drop to four. That is awesome. And maybe Brian again has a disenchant. He can disenchant his own stasis. You know, he did that in game two. Passing to turn. But look at that. Brian couldn't find another blue. So that means he's going to drop to four. But next turn he gets to, gets to untap. I do, yeah, exactly. Matt needs to go to four here because of that Urk Raider. So if Urk Raider cannot attack, it deals two damage to you. What an hilarious situation. There we see the disenchant again. So we saw that strategy in game two from Brian as well. Now he's going to untap everything. What is he going to do? I mean, they are smiling. It's a really nice match, I think. They're having a lot of uh, friendly banter. The fact is that Brian's under pressure. Tapping three. Are we going to see a time elemental? There's the time elemental. Remember, time elemental cannot block. Well, it can, but then it deals five damage to you. So that's, that's not, you don't want to do that. Let's see if Matt has an answer to the time elemental. At least he can attack for four, put Brian on eight. So, I mean, remember, this is game number three, right, of the finals. Whoever's going to win this wins the Reprint Masters, a tournament of more than 50 wizards. Oh, look at that unholy strength. And remember, okay, there's a counter spell. That's really good. What I wanted to say, remember, uh, a time, elemental, time Elemental cannot target cards that are enchanted. Which is this funny clause, but okay. Uh, look at that. Matt doing more drain life on the Time Elemental. Gaining two, going back up to six. And now he's going to swing in for four. He's going to put Brian on eight. And I think one of the things that Matt's done really well this game is understanding the importance of getting rid of Time Elemental. You know, he's, he's, he's using his, uh, his Drain Lives and his Terrors on the Time Elemental all the time. Let's see what Brian has found here from the top of his deck. Again, he needs this. Well, he already played a both his Wrath, so I guess he's looking for a balance. Or simply just a blocker, you know. A Sarah Angel can at least block the Urk Raiders. He's still on eight. If you can at least block one creature. There's the pass, though. Does that mean that Brian's going to drop to four? That will get him. That will get Matt really, really close to winning. Unholy strength. Oh, my goodness. Bad news for Brian. There's six coming in. Going to go to two. Is Suicide Black going to win the Reprint Masters? There, it's going to win the Reprint Masters. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Matt finishing it off with a Drain Life. An unsleeved deck and uh, has won it. Matt, man, there we see Matt. Congratulations, my man. I love the deck you brought to the tournament. I absolutely loved it. Also, Brian, loved your deck as well. But, man, Matt, you're unsleeved. Fearless Black Deck has won it. Congratulations. You're the champion of the Reprint Master 2022. Matt Strott, ladies and gentlemen. 
Oh man, what a match this was. I think it was a perfect final, perfect ending to a great, great tournament. If you want to know more about the Reprint Masters, please check the description below. There's a link to the tournament website and you can uh, you can see the other decks, you can check out the rules. Maybe you can organize your own Reprint Masters as well. Uh, that would be awesome, by the way. Let me know if you're planning on doing that. And uh, if you want to join tournaments like this, please check out the Patreon page of Timmy Talks, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, because I organize these events to thank my patrons and channel members for their support of the channel. So if you want to join in, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And uh, it already starts with $1 a month. So just for $1, you can already become a patron of the show. And then of course you are supporting me as a content creator. Creator. I love making these videos and thanks to the support of the patrons I can continue doing that so please consider becoming a patron of the show and before you go I'd also like to ask you to leave a like leave a comment and share this on your socials all these things are free and they really help the channel move forward and of course if you're not a subscriber yet please take a moment to subscribe and ring that bell Okay, lovely people, now that that is out of the way, I'm still just, ah, what a joy this final was. Just a last congratulations to Matt for winning it, and also a big thumbs up to Brian reaching the finals with a deck with four time elementals. That is absolutely awesome. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and of course, thank you very much uh, for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, and uh, see you next time. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?